Good morning. We welcome you once again to our Golden Lamb Stand online service. Today is traditionally called the Palm Sunday, the day in which we remember the Lord Jesus Christ's entry into Jerusalem, where he would eventually die on the cross. And in conjunction with Palm Sunday celebration today, I'd like to read to you from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 15. And that would be our call to worship this morning. John 12, 12 to 15. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. The word of God tells us that they went out to see him and they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. We thank God that the Lord Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for our sins and we thank God that he went into Jerusalem. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you send your son, your one and only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. And today, even as we remember the Lord Jesus Christ going into Jerusalem, even as the people proclaimed him to be the Savior, the Messiah, the Anointed One, we thank you because this Savior, this Messiah, this Anointed One was sent for us. So we thank you that even as we move into the Holy Week, we pray that the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ will envelop us this week even as we meditate upon the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we also want to pray that you accept our praise and worship this morning. We pray that you would speak to each and every one of us through the meditation of your word. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today I'd like to share with you from Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11 and I've entitled my message, The King Comes to Jerusalem. Matthew 21, 1 to 11. Let me read the text to you. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem and then he went onto the cross and we can now have life and life to the fullest. Even as we look at this incident, which we call Palm Sunday, where we remember the Lord Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem, we look forward to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when we know he will once again come into Jerusalem and proclaim himself King of Kings and Lord over all the earth. We thank you, Lord. We pray that you bless us even as we meditate upon your word and that you yourself will speak to us. In the Lord Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Today being Palm Sunday, we're looking at the Lord Jesus Christ. He comes into Jerusalem. He comes from the direction of the Mount of Olives. But before he comes into Jerusalem, he sends two of his disciples ahead of him to bring him back a donkey. And then the Lord Jesus Christ gets on the donkey and he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and even as he approaches Jerusalem there's a huge crowd in Jerusalem people have been there they are there for the Passover feast and what they do is they hold palm branches in their hands they put palm branches on the floor and they proclaim to the Lord Jesus Christ Hosanna Hosanna in the highest Hosanna to the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So many people ask, who is this? And they say that he is a prophet and he is a prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And we call this week the Holy Week where the Lord Jesus Christ comes into Jerusalem and he comes into Jerusalem for the purpose of being the Passover lamb where the Lord Jesus Christ will die on the cross for the sins of the whole world. So this is the Lord Jesus Christ's final journey into Jerusalem before he exits Jerusalem to die on the cross for the sins of the whole world. So today I would like to share with you concerning this journey of the Lord Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem and highlight a few things that happen during this triumphal entry. Now the first thing that I would like to share with you is that the Lord Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey and I would like to look at Matthew chapter 21 verses 2 to 5. Let me read it again to you saying to them go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt, 
the fall of a donkey. Now, the first thing I want to share with you is that the Lord Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and the donkey signifies servanthood. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, uh, spoke about this. Zechariah was written about 520 to 518 BC, about 500 years before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Zechariah saw this and he said in Zechariah 9, 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. So Zechariah saw the Lord Jesus Christ as king coming into Jerusalem. He was righteous and he was having salvation. So his coming into Jerusalem on a donkey was basically so that he could bring salvation into Jerusalem. But what I want to share with you today is that the Lord Jesus Christ came riding on a donkey and the donkey signifies servanthood. So the Lord Jesus Christ came as a servant. In fact, Isaiah says that he came as a suffering servant. And we remember the four servant songs in the book of Isaiah where the Lord Jesus Christ is portrayed as a suffering servant. I also want to share with you that he came riding on a donkey as a servant but he took on the position of a lamb so the donkey signifies servanthood the donkey signifies that he was a servant but the lamb signifies that he was a sacrifice he was the supreme and he was the final sacrifice now i want to share this with you because i believe that it's important to understand that as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, this servanthood and the sacrifice relates to each one of us. Now, I want to highlight an incident that happened during the Holy Week and more specifically uh, an incident that happened on the last day just before the Lord Jesus Christ went to the Garden of Gethsemane and then he was eventually arrested. As the Lord Jesus Christ celebrated the communion with his disciples, he spoke about servanthood. Let me read to you Luke chapter 22, verse 27. He says, who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. Now, throughout that conversation, the Lord Jesus Christ was emphasizing to his disciples and even before this incident, he emphasized to them that they should be servants, that all of us should be servants. We are not only servants of God, but we are also servants to one another. And I would like to highlight this verse because during that conversation, when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about servanthood, a few verses later, he spoke specifically to Peter. In verse 31, the word of God says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Verse 33, but he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Verse 34, Jesus answered, I, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. And the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking about Peter's denial. But what I would like you to capture is simply this. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about servanthood and then he moved on to speak about sacrifice. He spoke about his sacrifice and then he was speaking about Peter and he said, Peter, you are still not ready to sacrifice. And he said that Peter would deny the Lord Jesus Christ three times. Now let us fast forward to about two weeks later when the Lord Jesus Christ meets the disciples on the shore of Galilee. 
in Matthew 21 verse 18 where the Lord Jesus Christ asked Peter if Peter loved the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord Jesus Christ was reaffirming Peter of his love and John 21 verse 18 the word of God says I tell you the truth when you were younger you dressed yourself and went where you wanted but when you are old you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Now what I want you to capture is simply this. The Lord Jesus Christ came as a servant. He taught us that we need to be servants, but that servanthood needs to be accompanied with sacrifice. And that sacrifice needs to grow into a position of total sacrifice. In Matthew 16, 24, the Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So I would like to highlight this. The Lord Jesus Christ came on a donkey which symbolizes servanthood. We need to take on that position of servanthood in our lives. We need to be like the Lord Jesus Christ to reflect servanthood in every area of our lives. But servanthood must always result in sacrifice. Servanthood is about sacrifice. But having said that, the Lord Jesus Christ came as a servant. He died as that total sacrifice, but he will come again. And let me read to you from Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 onwards. The word of God says, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true. With justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He he has the name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty and on his robe and on his tie he has his name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the first thing I want to share with you is that the Lord Jesus Christ came riding on a donkey. He was a servant but he came and took on the position of the lamb. He was the total sacrifice. The Lord Jesus Christ will come again. He won't come again riding on a donkey, but as a warrior, as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords, he will come to proclaim justice on the living and the dead. The second thing that I would like to share with you is the word of God says they took palm branches, Matthew 21 verse 8, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. So what they did was they took palm branches and they placed them on the road. Matthew and Mark says that they placed them on the road so that the donkey on which the Lord Jesus Christ was riding could walk over these palm branches. John chapter 12 verse 13 says they took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord blessed is the king of Israel so in John's account it says that they took palm branches and they went out to meet the Lord Jesus Christ but according to church tradition we have all been led to believe that they were waving palm branches to the Lord Jesus Christ and they they were singing Hosanna to him. Now, I, I would like to just clarify here, it does not say in either one of the Gospels that they were waving palm, palm branches, but because they were in the atmosphere of worship and we believe they were holding these palm branches, we believe that they were possibly waving them, proclaiming that the Lord Jesus Christ was the anointed one, he was the savior, he was the Messiah who was to come and they said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the 
the Lord. Now, the palm branches are the sign of victory. So when they were waving the palm branches, they were proclaiming victory to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were proclaiming that he is the victor. He is the man who would bring victory to the nation. Now, I want to highlight this. The palm branches were waved to the Lord Jesus Christ before he died on the cross. So I want to mention this. There is victory before the cross. There is victory upon the cross. And there is also victory after the cross. And we know that that victory happened on the day of resurrection. But I believe what we must capture is the whole idea of victory is related to the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning it was before the cross, it was at the cross, and it was after the cross, and the Lord Jesus Christ is victory. He is the God who is a victorious Lord. And we see this in heaven because in Revelation chapter 7, we see a picture of heaven where the saints stand before the throne of God. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 and 10, the word of God says, After this I look and behold a great multitude which no man could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. Now this is the victory song of heaven that salvation belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through the Lord Jesus Christ that salvation comes to us. And this is the victory song of heaven. I want to highlight this because in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no other position than the position of victory. In God, there is no defeat. And we must believe that because this involves our lives. That in every situation, no matter whether we can understand it or not, no matter what troubles we go through, we must understand that because we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are always in the position of victory. The Lord Jesus Christ who lives within us cannot be defeated and because he is victory himself, our position is always a position of victory. Now, the third thing that I would like to share with you is that they proclaimed Hosanna, Matthew 21, verse 9. The crowd that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Mark 11, 9 and 10 says, those who went ahead and those who followed shouted Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our Father. Father David, Hosanna in the highest. Now the, the word Hosanna is taken from the Hebrew and it comes from two different words and the words basically mean to be safe or to be a deliverer, one who saves, one who preserves, one who rescues or one who brings salvation. And it's connected to a word that is a plea, a request. I pray to you. So put together, Hosanna simply means, I pray you come and save me now. So Hosanna basically is a prayer to God, asking God to save. Because if we look at Jerusalem during that time, we see there was political turmoil. On the one side, there was this Roman Empire, the Roman soldiers and Caesar. And on the other side, there was King Herod, who took on the position of a king being appointed by the Roman Emperor when in reality he's not a genuine descendant of the Israelites and yet because of his political skills he becomes a great king later known to be Herod the Great and later we see his sons rule different parts of the kingdom and then on the other hand there was a whole religious authority who were trying to govern the people who were imposing all kinds of laws and 
making the people struggle. So the people were in a situation of a political turmoil. Economically, they were suffering and people were struggling and they were praying to God for deliverance. They wanted someone who could deliver them from their situation of hardship. So the people were crying out, God save us, but they were also looking into Old Testament scripture where God had promised them a Messiah. And when they looked at the Lord Jesus Christ, they said that this is the son of David, this is the Messiah, this is the anointed one, and he is here to save us. So that is a context that surrounds this huge worship where people in their crowds surrounded the Lord Jesus Christ, waving palm branches, they proclaimed Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna, come save us now, because they believed that he was the anointed one, he was the Messiah, he was the savior that was going to deliver them. But they also said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this is a quotation from the prayer in Psalm 118 verses 25 and 26. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. So the psalm was a prayer saying that it's the Lord who would come and deliver them. And it's a proclamation saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But I would like to highlight this expression, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, because in Matthew 23 verses 39, the Lord Jesus Christ, after coming into Jerusalem and after the whole incident where he was worshipped and proclaimed as the Messiah who would come to save the people, said this, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Hebrew, it's Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai. So the Lord Jesus Christ says, until the children of Israel proclaim Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai, they will not see the Messiah again. They will not see the Lord Jesus Christ again, because until the people of God in Jerusalem call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will not return. Now I want to go back to the Old Testament in the book of Ezekiel, who speaks about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel chapter 43 verses 1 to 5. Then the man brought me to the gate facing east, and I saw the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. His voice was like the roar of rushing waters, and the land was radiant with his glory. The vision I saw was like the vision I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and like the visions I had seen by the Keba River, and I fell face down. The glory of the Lord entered the temple through the gate facing east, then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Now, I want to share something very important here, because just as the Lord Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem, he came into Jerusalem by way of the Mount of Olives. He came through the East Gate into the city, the word of God says in Ezekiel that that's how he would come in glory. And we know that the word of God tells us in Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read to you from verse 9. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They looked intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. What happened was the Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven on the Mount of Olives. And as they saw him ascend into heaven, 
two men dressed in white appeared among them and these men said that the same way you see the Lord Jesus Christ ascend into heaven he will return so it is believed that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns he will return to the Mount of Olives now if we go to Jerusalem today on the Mount of Olives there is a prayer tower called the Jerusalem house of prayer for all nations the Jehovah fun and in this prayer tower on the roof of this tower let me just quickly put up this picture of Jehovah fun the Jerusalem house of prayer you can see it here the Jerusalem house of prayer for all nations and on this roof facing the east there are a pair of footprints drawn on the floor to remind us that the Lord Jesus Christ will return to the Mount of Olives and he will return from the direction of the east. And let me read you Matthew chapter 24 verse 27. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said, For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So it was believed that the Lord Jesus Christ will return to the Mount of Olives and he will come from the direction of the east and from the Mount of Olives he will then proceed on to the east gate of Jerusalem and into the city of Jerusalem. Now I would like to share with you concerning the Golden Gate. Now the Golden Gate is the gate on the wall of Jerusalem that looks towards the east and this gate has been closed. Let me start off by reading to you Ezekiel chapter 44 verses 1 and 2. Then the man brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary the one facing east and it was shut the Lord said to me this gate is to remain shut it must not be opened no one may enter through it it is to remain shut because the Lord the God of Israel has entered through it now let me tell you a little bit more about this gate now this gate was closed by the Muslims in 810 and then it was reopened in the year 1102, 1102 by the Crusaders. So when the Crusaders came back and invaded Jerusalem, they opened the gate and then again it was walled up by Saladin after regaining Jerusalem in 1187, 1187. And during the Ottoman Empire, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, when he rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem together with the walls of Jerusalem he walled up the Golden Gate and this happened in 1541 and the Golden Gate remains walled up until today let me just put up a picture of the Golden Gate for you now this is the Golden Gate according to Jewish tradition this is the gate through which the anointed one or this is the gate through which the Messiah will enter Jerusalem and so the Ottomans permanently sealed up this gate so that the Messiah or to them the Antichrist will not be able to come through this gate and as you can see in the picture of the Golden Gate the Ottomans also built a cemetery in front of the Golden Gate to prevent the anointed one from coming through the gate because they believe that the dead would be detestable to the anointed one so he will not cross over the burial ground to get to the golden gate so in conclusion what i would like to share with you is simply this just as the lord jesus christ came into jerusalem he came from the direction of the mount of olives and then he came riding on a donkey into jerusalem and he went into jerusalem through the east gate we believe the king of kings and the lord of lords will return once again he will come onto the mount of olives and then he will go into the city of jerusalem through 
that east gate once again and then he will proclaim himself Lord over the city of Jerusalem and over the whole world. Now the question that we need to ask is so what do we do? What has that got to do with us? The first thing I want to share with you is we must believe, we must have faith and we must know that the Lord Jesus Christ will return. The Lord Jesus Christ will return to Jerusalem where he will come back and proclaim himself as king over Jerusalem that he would proclaim himself king over the whole world. The second thing that I would like to share with you is that we need to pray. We need to pray for ourselves. We need to pray for the whole world, but we also need to pray for the Jews so that they will accept the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said, until they say Baruch Haba B'Shem Adonai, he will not return. So we want to pray that the people of Jerusalem will call upon the Lord Jesus Christ they will say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and much more than that they will pray come and save us so that you can be king over us and the whole world and finally the third thing that we must do is we must pray for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ even as we look at everything around us we see the economy going down we see the there's wars and tension everywhere there's political struggle in almost every country of the world we know that it's time for us to pray Hosanna Hosanna Lord Jesus Christ come back come Messiah, come anointed one, come and save us now. So with that, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ came. We thank you that he came to die on the cross the first time. And we thank you that the victorious King and victorious Lord will return once again to proclaim his kingdom in Jerusalem and also his kingdom over all the earth. We want to thank you for this holy week. We want to pray that even as we meditate upon these things, help us to live lives that are pleasing before you as we look forward to the return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord Jesus, we pray pray Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, thy kingdom come, we pray that you come and rule over us because you are our king, you are our Lord, you are the saviour of the whole world. In the Lord Jesus name we pray, Amen.
benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Thank you for joining us once again at our Golden Lamb Stand Online service. We pray that in the coming week you would spend some time meditating upon the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in your meditations, we pray that the Lord would reveal Himself to you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.